All right, so in this video, I want to cover something I briefly talked about in a recent um, Instagram Live I did. I think I deleted it afterwards. So we're talking about uh, the primary motivator of, uh, the primary motivation, the primary motivator, depending, depending on how you want to look at it, of everybody's brain, unless you got brain damage. Um, this is very important. It's going to have a huge impact in, on your entire life, not just your professional career, your coding career, your business career, but everything if you understand this very important lesson. And it's one of the reasons why I try to be a little bit more optimistic than most people about most things. So the lesson is, and this is proven in the science, this is not me speculating, this is not spiritual stuff, uh, not that there's anything wrong with that, but this is proven in the science. And... What scientists have discovered is that our brains are literally designed to overemphasize potential threats. Think about it. You're a caveman or cavewoman, and you hear a rustling in the bushes. Our brain immediately assumes that could be a bear or a lion or whatever it is, some predator trying to attack us, about to attack us. So our brain goes into hyper fear response mode, you know, flight or fear flight or fight response kicks in, which is a primary response, and we, we do something, right? And it's almost irrational because most of the time, that rustling of the bush, it could be like a mouse, or it could be a bird, or it could be the wind, or it could be your imagination. So our brains literally are designed to overemphasize, to exaggerate potential threats. So you see it time and time and time and time again, whether it be on an individual basis or on a global basis, we tend to overreact to potential uh, threat situations. Sometimes, of course, it's real, of course, but a lot of times it isn't. Why? Again, because our brains artificially change our perception to overemphasize it because the brain says, the brain has been programmed over I don't know how many, whatever, million years, whatever it is our evolutionary timeline is, it has been trained over time that those who survive are the ones who are hypersensitive to potential threats. So you don't, go, you don't get eaten by the crocodile. You don't get killed by the tiger. So how does this relate back to your business life, your coding life, your, uh, your dating life, etc.? It goes back to the fact that you're going to Make up in your head, your brain will, your lizard brain will. I won't get into what the lizard brain is here. Your lizard brain will essentially over-exaggerate the fear. So whether you're going to get your first contract as a developer, going in for a job interview, just daily, daily anxieties you may have. You know, maybe approaching a, a, a girl or a woman, you know, you want to you you date or vice versa or whatever your brain starts coming up with all these weird scenarios, all these anxieties starts happening. At the end of the day, we know from experience, you know from experience, most of the time you have these anxieties and then, you know, they, they, don't, they don't come to, they don't bear fruit, right? These anxieties point to something that never actually materializes. So for example, let's talk about something very basic, dating. We'll talk about, I'll, I'll talk about from the point of view of a guy, because I'm a guy. Um, you see a good-looking girl, you want to go up and you want to chat her up, and you're worried about rejection. Rejection is like a very painful thing. You go, oh, you don't want to get rejection. So a lot of guys just don't go because they fear rejection. Now, the fear rejection and the pain rejection is, if you think about it with your logical mind, is irrational. Because if you never approach the girl, you don't meet the girl, you don't date the girl. But your fear is that if you approach the girl, she'll reject you and you won't meet or date the girl. But if you never go up to her in the first place because you want to avoid that pain of rejection, that anxiety, that fear that comes up, oh my God, I'm going to, I'm going to be so embarrassed. And then, so you never approach her and you're, you're, you're basically where you would be if the worst case scenario happened where you get rejected. Now, uh, any experienced and uh, salesman will tell you rejection is normal. It's no big deal. You get rejected, you move on. It's nothing personal. 
you go in terms of dating, you can go up to somebody and on day on Monday, they may not like your face, but two weeks later, they may they may have been open to you. It's just because whatever they were having a bad day that day. Regardless, doesn't matter if uh, you know you not approaching is is a tantamount to you approaching getting rejected. So, but most people, most guys won't just won't approach because they don't want to be rejected. So that's like an irrationality. Uh, you know, you have day anxieties about, oh, am I going to be ready if I go get a job? Why am I not good enough? You know, why am I don't get the job if I apply? Well, if you don't apply, you're in the same place as well, right? So you might as well go and uh, try out for the job. And if you don't get hired, big deal. You learn from the process. And what you learn over time is that whatever, you know, you just go in and every time you go apply for a job, every time you try to write some code, every time you try to bid on a freelance project, every time you try to launch a new idea, it just gets you better at what you're doing. So this uh, irrational fear uh, is holding you back. It's holding you back. So, you know, sometimes, you know, running across the highway is, that's not an irrational fear, right? You got to use a little judgment there. You're not, you don't want to do that, of course, you know. But a lot of our fears, a lot of our anxieties are born out of some illusion, some illusion of failure. And uh, I'll close with that. That leads to one of my criticisms of the modern way in which we teach and test people. Now, I come from a family of teachers. My father is a teacher, many of my aunts and uncles, like six or seven of my cousins are teachers. Um, one of the flaws is that we teach people to fear failure. In the real world, the most successful keep trying and fail, try, 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 and they succeed. And everybody goes, oh my God, these people are great. Now, in school, they teach you where if you fail that exam, that's it, you're done. You can't become a doctor now because you failed one exam in, in high school. It's silly, right? Uh, this whole notion of having people be so fearful of uh, messing up a, on an exam or something because in school it has long-term consequences consequences and this should not be the case this is artificial this is silly and it's not, it's counterproductive and i think that's why a lot of people have fear of trying out new things because in school you've been conditioned for uh, much of your life uh, you've been conditioned to uh, believe to know that if you fail a particular test if you try something a test and you fail um, that's it. It's on your permanent record. That's so stupid. Anyway, there you go. That's a little taste of the lizard wizard, which is something I'm thinking I'm going to be putting out. Very important. Understanding how your brain actually operates will help you to better uh, live your life. So I hope you see how this will have a tremendous impact in terms of um, everything that you do. All right. Let me know in the comments below if you like this type of subject. Bye-bye. Thank you.